Warning, we are not trained or licensed professionals. Do not take any advice that we give as official doctoral prescribed medical treatment. We only use the name as a means to appreciate cinema as a therapeutic device, not to be confused with drugs, antidepressants, or any other forms of enhancements that you might find in legal states. Please enjoy responsibly. Additional disclaimer. If the film says we can say it too. So check the film rating, and that will be our episode rating. How are you? I just wanted to say on the podcast here officially that I had my first therapy session today in a while, so um, I wanted to share that with you all. <laughs> that's great. Like, I mean, can you say that's great when it's like, I don't even know how to respond <laughs> to that, but that's, <laughs> I'm very happy that you were able to do that for yourself. I guess, you. is that the way to it's... That's a perfect response. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I was actually a little nervous about it, so. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that you were able to, I'm glad that you, you know, that's great. Um, did, did, how, how did it feel like, if you don't mind my asking, how does it feel now that you've done it? Are you going to keep doing it? I'm going to keep doing it. Yes. Um, I got a lot out today. We had like an extra long session to get started, but then, uh, I'll come. I'll go back next week. Well, we're doing it online. So um, she's from Atlanta. So we're just doing it through FaceTime. It was good. I just kind of told her about me, and she told me about her, and uh, we kind of scratched the surface on a lot of things. But we'll dig deeper from now on, and hopefully get to fixing some things. So it was good. Yeah. That's awesome. I never even thought like, yeah, you can do that virtually. Like, obviously you oh, can, yeah. but, like... So you said she lives in Atlanta, or she's just from Atlanta? Uh, she, yeah, she lives in Atlanta. So, yeah, today we're going to be talking about one of my personal favorites, Lady Bird, directed by Greta Gerwig, starring Saoirse Ronan, uh, Lucas Hedges, Timothy Chalamet, Laurie Metcalf. It's, it came out in 2017 and was nominated for Oscars that year. Written and directed by Greta Gerwig, this semi-autobiographical tale stars Saoirse Ronan as Christine, or Lady Bird, as she prefers to be called. In Sacramento, California, Christine is in her senior year of high school in 2002. We see her fall in love, get heartbroken, fall in love again, and get heartbroken again, a roller coaster not unlike the one she rides with the relationship with her mother. Christine finds out who she is and realizes what matters to her. What did you think about watching this movie again? When's the last time you've seen it? Honestly, the last time I saw it was when we went to go see it in the theater. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Um, I forgot how good this movie is. Mm-hmm. It feels very real. And there's scenes where I'm like, I don't relate to it immensely, but there are moments where I'm like, I feel this so much that I'm like, like I feel the secondhand cringe of the moment. Yes, exactly. Because I I remember seeing it in theaters, and I remember I remember quite a bit of the movie. Obviously, there were things that I forgot, and especially mm-hmm. after seeing Little Women, which is also Greta Gerwig written and directed, and then obviously has Saoirse Ronan and, and Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> yeah, it, it it was great going back to see this because I'm like, oh, this is like the first movie they were in together, and and I'm like, mm-hmm. I just I just want to see those two actors in movies directed by Greta Gerwig because it's a match made in heaven. <laughs> And I love it. Hopefully so there's much. gonna be more. Yes. Yeah. Let's do it. I maybe uh hmm, what would they be good in? They could do well, like uh I would say spoilers for little women, but it's like a story that's like hundreds of years old. A hundred years old. True. So like can 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 they be in a movie where they end up together? Yeah. <laughs> Those two because in these in this movie obviously they don't because because Timothy's, you know, he's a bad boy. And then mm-hmm. in Little Women, it doesn't happen because reasons. Reasons. Yeah, it's complicated, but it's so real. <laughs> did you? Did you s- it makes me want to cry. Yeah. So so you you have seen Little Women? The Greta Gerwig? Yeah. Women? What did you, what were your thoughts yep. on it? Um, I liked it. I saw it in theaters with Judy. I think that might have been the last movie I saw in theaters before the world ended. But mm. um, then I watched it again with my family. And at times it was kind of like eye rolly, 
heartwarming, like overly heartwarming. I'm just like, oh my, like, oh, uh, this is like too happy for me. I don't know. <laughs> 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 but it was good. I mean, it's a good family movie and it's sweet. And I do like the ending a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, the acting is really, really good. But I hadn't seen the other versions of the movie. Have you seen the other versions? Uh, no, I haven't. I'm curious to see the, the 90s one with uh, Winona, Winona Ryder in it. But mm-hmm. that's the only other one I really want to see. Because after watching uh, Greta's version, I was just like, man, this is so good. But like, how, how can the other versions be any better? Mm-hmm. It, it seems like they the adaptations just kept... From from what I've heard, anyway, they just keep getting better. And then this this was, like, the peak. And also it did things with the narrative and the structure and the ending that made it even more unique, and I really appreciated that. Mm-hmm. Side note, I have not read the book, but I've always, ha- I've always had a desire to. So maybe, maybe that would change my opinion of the movie. Maybe I'd love mm-hmm. it even more. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I forgot about the whole time element of it and how it kind of switched back and forth between years that kind of tripped me up the first time i watched it it Mm -hmm. took me a minute i was like what year are we in when is this happening (laughs) yeah what year is this yeah Mm -hmm. but me too but the second time around it kind of clicked in yeah for sure have you seen it twice no i i I, 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 let me let me rephrase that i haven't seen it twice in full but one time there was like a like a free trial of the of the premium movie channels like stars or something and i watched like maybe the first like half hour 40 minutes or something and then i went to mm. sleep or watch something else yeah i really like how is this this is turning into an episode on little women but i really like how um how the past is like like how the how the different color tinting is you know like how the like how the mm-hmm. past is warmer than the than the than the present is more like harsher tones and that's kind of watching it again i picked up on that more like right away mm-hmm. as opposed to gradually realizing it you know so that was really great yeah that's a good way to keep track mm-hmm. other than Sersha's haircut which <laughs> that's what that was my way of keeping track throughout the movie the first time i was like wait short hair or long hair i don't know it's like watching lost highway when Patricia arquette's hair changes yeah uh yes so ladybird uh yeah. timothy chalamet yeah yeah so we could have a movie where saoirse ronan and timothy end up together that would be cool i'm wondering if they're going to be in anything else together i'm hopefully they still get along as actors and friends so we can see them in more things <laughs> Yeah, that would be great. I don't I don't know if they've cast anybody as, as Princess Irulan for the new Dune, but for the second one, they could have Saoirse play her. Yeah. I, I know it's go. not Greta Gerwig, but... <laughs> That's okay. I think, um, if you don't mind, while we're on the topic of Dune, I want to share my little theory for the record, just in case. Okay. So, this movie is going to... Ad- the 2021 Dune is going to adapt the first half of the book. And I'm thinking, so the second movie is obviously going to adapt the second half of the book. But because the cut point is really like two-thirds of the way through, from my understanding, I think the second movie can cover the rest of the first book and the entirety of the second book, which is really short in comparison. And then they can, then the second movie will be called Dune Messiah, like the second book, even though it'll have the ending of the first book and the second book. Does that make okay. sense? Okay. Yes, so, we shall see. It's on the record now, so yeah. now we can come back and check. And book-wise, I know they, they filmed this for the 84 movie, but took it out. So in the book, um, Paul Atreides, he, I guess spoilers for Dune, so maybe don't listen to this, but Paul Atreides, he marries the princess, the, narr- the narrator, like for political reasons, but then he goes to uh, to Chani and says, um, you know, I'm just marrying her just because it'll it'll mend the gap between the different like families but it's not it's not because i it's not because i love her or anything you know i i love you and only you so Aww. which is so sweet especially because it's kyle saying it and then in the new one it'll be timothy saying it so yeah but yeah so i wonder if he's gonna bulk up for that role or if he did bulk up for that role he's so twiggy <laughs> <laughs> well, i can't imagine him being like a hero type character you know when it looks like i could just like snap his wrist <laughs> Yeah, but um, I don't know actually what they would do, but if if he's gonna do that, but we'll find out. But we will. I'm excited to see that. But the reason I was saying Sersha could be the princess is because they get even though they don't end up together, they get married for you know arranged marriage. So 
Ah, uh, yes. There we go. But that's still not them <laughs> ending up together in the ways that, like, we're talking about. So, either that's way. That's true. But maybe they have a curse and they can never truly end up together. Maybe in real life they'll end up together. Or, or maybe, maybe one of them's married. I don't know. Maybe Sir Sharon is married. I don't married. think they are. I don't think she is. All right. Let's find out. Yeah, because she's 26 and Timothy Chalamet is 25. 25. And no, neither of them are, like, married or anything. Wait, I never knew this. Timothy Chalamet is an interstellar. Oh, yeah. He's like the little boy, I think. Yeah. The son. I haven't gone back and watched that since I've known that fact, though. I kind of went, oh, man, that's a good movie. I want to watch that. Interstellar, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've, it's so good. I, I've only seen it once, and that was when I think you lent it to me. But I remember it just being mm. like such such a powerful movie. I love Christopher mm-hmm. Nolan's movies, most of them. Pretty much all of them. Tenet, have you seen that? No. Me either. I heard... But it's at Redbox, I think. Redbox. <laughs> but it didn't. It doesn't have very good reviews on Redbox. I wonder if it's uh. Yeah, I heard mixed things about it, and that kind of just drew me away from it. And since and since mm-hmm. it, since that was when theaters weren't open, I just kind of dedicated my time to watching other things, mm-hmm. like like the original Star Trek movies and um, Batman stuff. <laughs> Right. Yeah, and and YA movies, which. Oh yeah, I'm excited to hear about. Not that. this time, but in the in oh, the okay. near future. In the future, it has 7.5 out of 10 stars on IMDb. That's pretty good. It's not bad. Uh, I mean, that, anyway, that's, I'll that's probably watch bad. that sometime. I sound pretentious. That's not bad. That's not bad. It's not I bad. mean, my movie has 9.5, but you know. Tenant on. Also has a 3.5 out of 5 on Letterboxd, which is like the same thing. So, Ah, okay. Lady Bird has a 4.0 and Little Woman has a 4.2. Wow. Okay. I just love this movie. I relate to it so much. When I first saw it, I'm pretty sure I smiled the entire first act. Like, <laughs> I thought every joke, every line was hilarious. And I was just like, oh my god, me. Same. Me. <laughs> <laughs> um... Although I didn't go to Catholic school, but I grew up Catholic. And I know she's not Catholic, but she goes to Catholic school. So like the part where she and her friend are just like laughing and laying on the ground eating the the communion hosts. Oh my gosh, that killed me. <laughs> <laughs> like all the Catholic jokes and stuff is so funny. And I love to see that in movies. Whenever they show like Catholic mass in movies, I don't know, I get excited. <laughs> Because I'm like, oh, childhood. I know that. I know how they do that. Gosh, some of the mom scenes too. I mean, the relationship between a high school girl and her mother is something something special. And this movie really brings that out and just accentuates the most horrible parts of it. And I can relate to like that scene when they're in the thrift store shopping for prom dresses. My mom and I used to always go prom dress shopping together, obviously, and... <laughs> I would try something on and I'd be like, I love it. And she'd be like, mm, I don't know about these ruffles or <laughs> something like that. Let's see. Oh, yeah. And then they're fighting and then she picks out a dress and she's like, oh, how about this one? And their uh, their tone completely changes and from fighting and she's just like, oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's like my favorite scene. I love that too. Yeah. The whole colleges thing, man. I remember going through that with my parents. I mm-hmm. I wanted to go far away for college, but I ended up going just a couple hours away to a state school. It wasn't in my state, but it was in a different state, but it still wasn't very far away. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of wanted, to, still wanted to go far away. And I visited, I think I went on 18 college tours. That's ridiculous. One for every year of your life. <laughs> that is so many. <laughs> I applied to five, and then I took like two or three kind of very seriously. I ended up going to one, but yeah, I just remember, like, do you remember your senior year, like, trying to apply to schools and doing research on all the schools? Like, you went far away. That's awesome. Yeah, I did. Um, I did want to go far away, and I remember it very vividly, actually. I think they were about three schools i seriously was like i want to get into either one of these any one of these but there's there's the one i want to really get into because it's far away and that was the one i got into and then i met davis and judy and then i met you so it couldn't have worked out better 
I love it. I'm so glad you did. Yeah, me too. Without that, this wouldn't exist, this podcast. Yeah. Well, maybe it would. Maybe we would have met in some other way. Ooh, maybe. Like a David Lynch. No, I wouldn't even know about David Lynch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. Um. I wish there was a different genre I could call this movie besides coming of age, because a lot of people, I think, turn their nose up at coming of age movies. I don't know. I just feel that way. Like if I say it's a coming of age movie, I have to be like, it's a coming of age movie, but like, it's really good. Still watch it. You know, I do. I don't know. Do you get what I mean? (laughs) I do get what you mean. Okay. When I describe, instead of say, I usually just say slice of life instead of coming of age because of anime, but then I have to explain to to people what slice of life means because no one knows Uh. what it means. And except for, (laughs) except for the people who told me what it means, I feel like nobody else that i know or that i that i tell it to really understands that as a genre it's just like yeah it's not a not as common of a term in the layman words it's more of a film jargon yes thank you that's exactly what i was trying (laughs) to say yes i get you um did you do theater in high school no but i did in middle school for you did in middle school two years did you have do you have any of your performances recorded no, but I'm sure if I emailed my old band teacher, I could get them. Hell yeah. I would love to see that. No, you would not. <laughs> I'll show you mine if you show me yours. Okay. Because um. <laughs> I was in the, uh, the, I almost said film, theater in high school. Musical and non-musical. Oh, we just had musicals. Oh, that's fun. If, if you want to see me have a solo, I never had any solos. So me either. I I always had like bit parts and smaller roles because we had to like double up roles because we had like, you know, we didn't have enough people out. So <laughs> so what, whatever you did as an audition, then you did it. And then like, like you got cast in like two or three small roles. And it's like, that happened to me. It happened to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Do you remember the plays that you, or the musicals you did? Were they anything? Oh, yeah. What were they like? Uh. Just small musicals, or were they ones that like people know of? Uh, they were, they were, they were very big ones that people would know, like instantly recognizable. What are they? Yeah, so I was in Annie, and then The Wizard of Oz, and Annie was uh. so much more fun because I knew more. Of the people I knew went out for it, so that was mm-hmm. great. Um, I think Wizard of Oz was pretty good, but since like a third of the people I knew weren't in it. Then I'm like, well, this is, this isn't as fun. So I ended up and didn't do it in later years. And I think I think the next yeah. year they did something else, and I was like, I don't care about that anyway. So was it a, like junior high and high school collaborating? Yes. Okay, gotcha. I think Annie was just junior high. I think Wizard of Oz was the junior high and high school because there were so many roles. Mm-hmm. Okay. That sounds fun. It was fun, actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but then after I after I did the Wizard of Oz, then I stopped taking band and choir because that that was that was the year I'm like I'm done with this because there were because of reasons. Aww. Yeah, I was in My Fair Lady my freshman year. That was the only one that's like well known. The others were stupid small ones that like what like the Ransom of Red Chief. Who even what is that? I don't know. It's the Ransom of Red Chief. <laughs> and then we did like the stupid one that was like. Friday Night Lights or Saturday Night Lights or something. It was like a <laughs> disco one. That was my senior year. Maddie, I think you, um, I think you mean Saturday Night Fever. Yes. Friday yes, Night I Friday. do. <laughs> <laughs> is, 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 isn't that like a movie and TV show about like football yes. or something? Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm, 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 Saturday I'm even, night fever. I'm not even laughing at, at the fact that like like you didn't remember because of course you know it's been a long time, so so like I'm not I'm not laughing at that. I'm just laughing at the fact of of how similar they are, but how different they are. I know. Like in title, but I know. In... I think it was Friday night, Saturday night lights, something like that. <laughs> yes, you're right. Thank you. The only the only reason I know is Saturday night fever is because I know John Travolta's in it and it's about disco, but I have not seen it so i don't know anything else about it and i don't think it was copied the movie i think it was just called that um oh yeah or was it a movie or a play that he was in no it was a movie because because it has the okay i've only because the big 
the only part I've seen is the opening, and it's like you know the "Staying Alive" song, and it's just John Travolta walking down the street. Oh yeah, nope, we didn't do that. Sadly, that'd be great. That would be way more fun. We ours was about like a high school and some weird backstory where somebody died, and I have I don't even remember. Wait a minute. It was it was dumb. Maybe maybe it was like. And because I remember, I think our Annie one was like a, a trimmed down version. Because obviously we couldn't do the big, you know, like the big like New York skyscraper stuff. So we just did like a watered down, ver- like like it wasn't like something that that our school like teachers wrote. It was like one that you that was like a widely accepted like you know shortened condensed version mm-hmm. of the story. So maybe maybe that's okay. what it was for for yours too. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, so those scenes are all relatable too in Lady Bird. Or hang on, if you don't mind, I had um yeah, because I think they do that with Rocky Horror. I think as a big example, that's the example I should have led with because like oh really? Because like it's like schools will do Rocky Horror, but they'll do like a, a watered <gasps> down, softened version of it. And I'm like, how great would that have been? Wow. Like that, that's what I would have loved to do. We basically did that with our friend group anyway. When I was like a freshman, I was a friends with a bunch of theater nerds. And we all, like, watched the movie and played it out and everything. <laughs> well, we did that, too, except we watched people play it out. Right. Oh, so what's up with the priest? And, like, then him later on being at, talking with her mom at the hospital. I was going to ask you the same thing. I mean, the scene where he says, let's play the crying game. First one to cry wins. And then he starts crying, like, immediately. Like, that's obviously really, really funny. <laughs> But then it goes off like, oh, wait, what's actually wrong with them? There's something wrong with them. And I'm not sure why they put that in or what it means. There was a line that said, like, like his son died or something. Really? Yeah. So, so, some, somebody, I forget who it was. So, somebody said, like, 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 I, like, I think his son died or something. Like, that's the actual line. Oh, really? It's like, I think his son died. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Because... It's the girl that t- uh, Lady Bird and Danny are talking to after school. And she said, like, his son was a drug addict or something? Yeah. Oh, I found it. Um, I heard that before he became a priest, he was married and had a son who died at 17 of a drug overdose, which maybe was a suicide. But, but my mom says same difference if you're careless with your life. That's yes. what she said. Yes, okay. That's the quote. Yeah. That's not my own opinion. That's the quote. <laughs> right, right. That that's a hard hitting line. Yeah, and it's just like thrown out there. That's what I like about this movie too. Is the dialogue is it's just kind of yeah, just one off here, one here. They're just like talking mm-hmm. and they're throwing out lines here and there, and they're not kind of they're not really talking to each other. Especially that scene where they're I think it's when her mom comes home and she's making eggs, and then Lady Bird wants to make the eggs, and she says like Mom, they're not cooked, and. Then Shelly and Miguel are talking about something else. And then her dad is just like spewing off lines, like something that's just like coming out of his brain. And they're all just talking at once, but none of them are talking to each other, really. I really like that. We just hear all of their personalities coming out in yeah. such a weird way. And the lines, you know, there's some kind of like Wes Anderson characteristic about them where, you know, characters just talk. I talk about this a lot, I feel like. And it's like they're not addressing each other. They're just kind of speaking. It feels a lot like normal conversation. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. If you desire, let's talk about Timothy Chalamet in this movie. Okay. What do you think of his character? Who's I hate him so much. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a douchebag. Oh, yeah. That's another thing that's so relatable. She just, like, she looks at him once at that band uh at that show that his band is playing at and then she's like automatically in love Mm -hmm. and that's just so relatable in high school i feel like (laughs) you're just like oh that guy's cute and then you like create this whole story around him in his in your head and you're like oh well if we did this and we did this we could like have so much fun and we'd be awesome together Mm -hmm. and you like don't even know who this person is (laughs) (laughs) you just build this whole story around them then like she remembers him still from for a few months later after because she sees them on thanksgiving and then it's like in the springtime after the holidays where she sees him again Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I just, I don't think that, uh, yeah, gosh, his, <laughs> he's just like reading a politics book at the party all alone outside. Like, why are you even here? <laughs> Although I do agree with him with the whole tracking device cell phone thing. That was pretty prophetic of him. Yeah. And yeah. And then I love also how that comes back when uh, Lady Bird gets her cell phone and then she's like, I got my tracking <laughs> device. Yeah. But no, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I, I, I love that when that tracking device bit because I'm like, yeah, that's really funny um, and, and it's ironic. But also, I love what you said about how when you take, especially in high school, when you take one look at somebody and you just have this whole projection of them inside your head and like how how they are as a person and how you would be with them and spend time with them. And, and, and mm-hmm. I'm just like, that's also really relatable because <laughs> it mm-hmm. happens. So relatable. It happens because that's, that's, that's how, you, that's how yes. you process it, you know? Yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> Definitely had that happen before. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. The bit with his dad, like, having cancer, that was sad, and it just kind of is there and is gone, and then it comes back a little bit when she sees him, like, laying in the chair, sleeping while she leaves his house. It's kind of interesting that they threw that in there. Yeah. Like, it maybe makes her sympathetic toward him in a way Mm -hmm. or like maybe she's realizing that she's she can be grateful for the relationship she has with her parents Mm -hmm. um and they're healthy and oh and because i also talk about how like when her mom and dad are in the bathroom and they're talking about some other guy who died and he was only 56 Mm -hmm. and um i guess that's kind of like saying we should be grateful for the time we do have with our loved ones even if all the moments aren't so great yeah there really is Maybe. a thematic connection between those two scenes and like the, the like i like i'm just sitting here just like in awe because i'm like yeah that sounds that sounds like that was the intent so you just kind of blew yeah, my I mind i just kind of thought that yeah i just kind of put that together <laughs> as yeah and then that also kind of ties back in with the priest too with his son did he try to hurt himself do you think is that why he was there because 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 her mom's like works in the mm-hmm. you know and then and then i just say like for this for this um for this semester for the spring play he won't be here and then the other then like the jv coach is there instead and when he was drawing on the yeah. board that was so <laughs> Oh my gosh, I know. It was so funny. <laughs> it was like, okay, the wide lines, the wide lines are singing. You're singing, you're walking, you're walking. <laughs> and here's Danny still singing. He's still singing. <laughs> it's coming up. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, it's so funny. Um, yeah, but yeah, maybe maybe that is what happened. Um, cuz yeah, otherwise why would he be at the at the ER or no, she wasn't an ER nurse. She was just a, a nurse, right? I think so. Yeah. Maybe he was just getting, like, some sort of diagnosis, maybe, and then he decided to not go back to school. I'm not sure. Because she asks him, like, who his support system is, and then, it's like, questions like that are just, like, you know. Um... Mm-hmm. It's interesting that we see Lady Bird kind of ditch Julie. Yeah. Because usually we would be, like, following Julie in that situation and julie would be our protagonist and the antagonist character would be like i'm ditching you to go hang out with my new popular friend Mm -hmm. um so it's interesting that our protagonist does that yeah and obviously we feel bad for julie Mm -hmm. but it's good that it comes out that ladybird was lying about where she lived and everything just to try to get friends and Mm -hmm. then her friends kind of like you know turned out to be lame anyway and then she went back to julie which is kind of like Okay, but maybe you could have realized that Julie was great before that. I don't know. Instead of being dropped by your other friends and then having to go back to Julie, you know. That's true. Although she does like make the conscious choice cause, because because she stands up for herself again and says Timothy Chalamet, his name is Kyle. He he's he he's like, God, I hate this song. And then she's like, I love it. And then she's like, you know. I want to go to prom and, and, and then, he, then he's like okay mm-hmm. and then she's like actually i want to go to my friend julie's house and he's like okay yeah i'll take you there so like yeah she kind of realizes it on her own i mean she stands up for herself and does that on her own even if it takes yeah that's a true while. it's not like they were like you can't come to prom with us so yeah yeah that's true that was a good moment mm-hmm. 
And I'm glad that she and Danny could be friends after that whole incident, because that would be rough Mm -hmm. to go through. Yeah, yeah. Poor little Danny. Yeah. Yeah, I love that scene when she goes, when he visits her while she's working, and then how they just have a friendship after that, and like how when he goes up to see the fam, when he goes up to see her family, and is like, I miss, I miss seeing all of you. I'm like, aw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so sweet. Mm-hmm. Did you have anyone like come out to you in high school? Not in high school, no. Um, in college, yes, but not in high school. Yeah, I had one person in high school. It was, I felt honored to, like, know that about them. Yeah. It was, like, Mm-hmm. They had came out, and then they came out to me and my other friends, and it was just like, oh, I feel special that I was Aww. one of the people that they told. But it was a rough high school for him, and I witnessed some of that, and that was not mm. fun. Um, yeah. But anyway, first of all, that's amazing that that your friend trusted you, and hope, and you know, if you're still friends, I hope they still trust you. Obviously. Uh, second of all, um, I'm come from a small town too, so uh, that. I, I can't even imagine how hard that would be. Um, and then third, yeah, one of my one of my friends who came out to me, they definitely have had their struggles with that too. And I just, yeah. it's, it's just something I wouldn't wish on any on anybody. I know, for sure. Mm-hmm. But yeah, especially in like small conser- conservative areas, it's just way rougher than it has to be, you know. And like some kids are. Luckily enough, lucky enough to live in progressive areas, and they probably come out at the age of ten, and they're like living, my, <laughs> living their best lives. They're like, "Yes, this is me. This is who I am," mm-hmm. and have so much support. And then there's like other kids who are just, "Oh my, have it the opposite." <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's really hard, especially with. I mean, like I said, obviously I can't even imagine it, but just e- even being friends with somebody who's going through that is so it's it's so like man you know i can't even imagine how that would feel for you Mm -hmm. you know yeah so i was just looking at the cast of this and it's crazy how many how these actors blew up after this movie yeah um have you seen have you have you seen book smart yeah that's what i was gonna bring up that's have you seen it yes so funny (laughs) i love it beanie feldstein is great i mean she's awesome in this movie too Mm -hmm. um and I love when her personality really comes out in Book Smart. <laughs> yeah, I do too. That movie's crazy. <laughs> it's insane. It's great. And then of course Timothy and uh, Lucas Hedges too. Mm-hmm. Um, they just like Lucas Hedges was in so many like Oscar nominated movies in the past few years. It's been he's been really successful. Same with Timothy. Mm-hmm. Um, and Saoirse. Yeah. Laurie Metcalf though she was uh more active earlier on right so yeah she was in scream 2 yes she is in scream 2 um i forget who she plays although don't look it up because you know spoilers oh okay she's in a lot of tv yeah she's also she's in all the toy story movies yeah trying to figure out who she plays though because in that one that wouldn't be this one says andy's mom but then it also says mrs davis or yeah so andy's last name is davis you learn something new every day that's crazy. Oh, Desperately Seeking Susan. I've been meaning to watch that. She's in Runaway Bride, Desperately Seeking Susan. I've heard of that. Is that um Is that the one I'm thinking of? Um It's got a uh, It's on HBO. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of that. Oh yeah, Madonna. <laughs> and Rosanna Arquette. Rosanna Arquette. Is she related to Patricia Arquette? I don't know. Let's find out. Cuz she's in Pulp Fiction. <gasps> yes. They're sisters. Sister, sister. <laughs> Crazy. Anyway, what, where are we? What are we talking about? I have um, no idea. I'm just. I'm oh just... yeah, Lori Metcalf. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I've really seen her in anything besides Toy Story. I suppose. I've seen her in a few things, but nothing. Um, because obviously, but I do want to look up who she is in Scream Two because she might be who I'm thinking of, but I don't want to say. Okay. Uh, but anyway. Yeah, um, maybe she could be in Five Cream. Five Cream. <laughs> yep, she, yep, she, yep, she's exactly who I thought she was. Awesome. Nice. Um, she, she plays a very memorable supporting character. So. Ah, okay. Yeah, that, that'd be great if she could be in Five Cream, um, which comes out next year, apparently. It should be, it'll be fun. Really? Yeah. Um, but that's what I don't get. It has the returning main OG3, so why the, why is it not, what? 
Sequels need to... St- okay, I've, I've already hashed this to death. I don't need to do it again. Oh, man. I love this movie when I first saw it, too. And I've seen it probably... This is probably, like, my fourth or fifth time watching it. I just want to watch it again now. <laughs> it's pretty short. I, I feel like I've, yeah. I could watch this one over and over for sure. It's just... Although it did lose a lot of, like, the whole... Like the first act, you know, I told, I said, made me smile like the whole time. Mm-hmm. And the second time I watched it, I was like, yeah, it's still good, but I'm not like overjoyed like I was the first time I saw it. But it still had that great effect on me uh-huh. the first time, which was memorable. Yeah, I just, I, I love that this is a movie. This is what I was trying to say before. I love that this is a movie that you're just, you just have this deep connection to it and just like all these little things just like radiate from within you and you're just like, oh yeah like this is me and this is me this might not be me but then this is there's just all those little Mm -hmm. nuances that you just relate to and i love when movies do that for others yes me too like when she's writing her boys names on her wall and then she crosses one off and she writes the other one and then eventually she paints over both of them and has a new start it's so emotional yeah that's great oh yeah the scene where uh ladybird is talking to that nun about her essay about Sacramento and her that nun is like it seems like you really love Sacramento and she's like I guess I just pay attention and then she's like is that the scene where she um where, where, where she's like I know I know you put the thing on the back of my car and then she's like I, I thought it was funny it might be that scene or it might be a different scene I'm not sure if those are two different scenes I can't remember yeah and she's like is the love and attention aren't they the same thing and that's just like the whole theme of the story and I love that I love that scene the um the the main nun in this is uh, s- uh sister what's her name let me look it up uh Sarah Joan she's she's Aunt Meg from Twister <gasps> oh my gosh yes <laughs> I did not know that that's awesome she just has such a sweet face she does she's the best <laughs> now I want to go watch Twister again. Apparently, there's an alternate version of this film. Oh, no. In Australia, they released it without Lady Bird saying the C word. And then also without the the scene where she's looking at her porno magazine after she turns 18. Because um, that wasn't allowed in Australia. Australia to be like an M rating. It had to be an M15 rating or something yeah. like that. This is an A24 movie, right? Yes, it is. A24 has become my favorite studio. Right now, they have Minari that's out for like some Oscars, and I really want to see it, but it's not available on anything, really. You'd have to rent it for like 20 bucks. Which one? Uh, it's called Minari. It's about an immigrant family living in Arkansas. Yeah, it's like... I don't get why some new movies are doing that where you have to buy it for 20 bucks. Just just start off renting it at theater ticket prices and then go down. I know. Like, what? That's insane. Like, that's why I still haven't seen Bill and Ted 3 because when we were going to watch it, it was like 25 bucks. And I'm like, I'm not paying 25 bucks for a two-night rental. Like, I know. That's ridiculous. You know, it's it's at Redbox. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's what I'll watch tonight. I'll, I'll watch Bill and Ted 3 or SpongeBob 3. I'm sure one there of them will go. be much better than the other. They took one of the classic SpongeBob episodes off of the Paramount streaming service because because they they haven't like played it on the channel in two years, and then they took it off the, so it's not on the Paramount Plus service. So I'm like, what? this is why you have DVDs. They took off like yes. an episode from like season eleven or twelve, and I'm like, I don't give a shit. But then they took one off of season three, um, you know, because classics, which is like seriously. Yeah, what? Why? It's the episode where Mr. Krabs goes through his midlife crisis. I'm feeling it, SpongeBob. Patrick, that's oh, not that one. right. <laughs> that's a great one. I know. Um, that's so I, dumb. I think it's because um, let me let me see if it's on Amazon because Amazon used to have the original seasons on Prime, and I don't know if they still do with the new service. But um, it's it's the episode when they when Patrick's like, we're gonna go on a panty raid. So I assume that's why. Mm-hmm. But like oh, they they aired okay. it for how many years before? Why is it like a yeah, big deal seriously. now? Everyone already knows the line. <laughs> yeah. And they, and they don't actually, like, really do anything. I mean, I guess they break into his Mr. Krabs' mom's house, but, like... <laughs> and they do pull out a pant, a pair of panties, don't they? I think they do. Yes, and they do. Does SpongeBob put them on his head? Um, I, That might be a different one. I'm not sure. 
But yeah, I don't remember. so they've been making that up. So they took it off of Amazon. So they have they don't have that that one on Amazon anymore. Wow. Okay. So this is why we buy DVDs, ladies and gentlemen, because <laughs> you because you never know when some studio comes along with a sadistic choice. Mm-hmm. So rude. I don't get it, but this is why this is why I'm gonna keep my DVDs. Yeah. Yeah. So other than the missing episode, which is you know, ironically, there's also one called the lost episode. Not to be confused, they have the first six seasons on Amazon Prime, but you, don't, you only need to watch the first like three, maybe four, maybe four seasons, um, because because season six yeah. is like rock bottom tier. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> now, now I, I might just go watch SpongeBob because I, whenever I watch SpongeBob, it makes it like feeds my soul. But then I, I always forget that watching SpongeBob is an option. Like when I when I need to like feel better about things uh-huh. like i always forget it's an option and then when i remember i'm like oh duh like i should just go do that more often yeah so, so maybe what i'll do is i'll just put my dvds like somewhere where i can see them all the time and then i'll be mm-hmm. like oh <laughs> there we go there you go casual reminder casual reminder okay so i want to talk about the ending of this really quick and then we can move on yeah to of course our, if there's anything else you want to say uh no but please go ahead and talk about the ending okay so the ending is where it really fucking got me. Uh-huh. Whew. So she goes to college. She goes far away. Mm-hmm. And her and her mom aren't on speaking terms when she's dropping her off at the airport, which is just so sad. It's just so devastating. And then her mom is, like, crying when she's coming away. And she, like, runs in to see if she's still there. But then she is in, of course. She's gone on. And then her dad is so sweet. Mm. Um, and... I also relate to this because I tried to, when I, God, I'm so mean. I went away to college and I had my parents come help move me in. Mm -hmm. And I, of course, was feeling sad about, like, them leaving and everything, but I didn't really want to admit it to myself. So my plan was to annoy my mom and, like, make her mad at me so that it wouldn't be sad when she left. (laughs) And it worked, and it was just horrible, and I re- much regret doing that, but it's just, like, crazy how much I related to that part. Um, and then, I don't know, going to college does something to you, man. Like, the first week, months of college, I just felt like I was going insane. I had so many things to remember and mm-hmm. trying to figure out to do things on my own, and it was just, like, so different than anything else, but... Um, and then the first weekend of college, I went to this party and I made some bad decisions and got really, really messed up and went home and I was just felt terrible about myself. And then the next day I went to church and I just like sat there and got all teary eyed and cried a little bit. And it just like was the exact same thing as this ending to oh, this movie. Wow. And I was like, oh my God god this movie just knows how to really do that connect to everyone because or at least connect to me like i think greta gerwig has a a string so we have a soul line connecting or something but yeah it was just when i saw the ending i was like oh my gosh you've got to be kidding me um so that's all i wanted to say about that but i really like the ending um And then, yeah, the part where she just, she leaves a message. It tells us that things are going to get better for her and her mom. And, um, yeah, just kind of like the silent ending where she's just looking around and then it just cuts to black. That's, it was powerful. That is so beautiful. I'm so happy you shared that with me. Wow. The fact that, this fact that that ending just hits you in that way is just so, I love that. That's great. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I love this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I love the moment when, like you said, when the mom shows up and she's not there, but the dad is really sweet because there's, there like, there's moments before when, I forget if she's talking, if Lady Bird's talking to uh, her mom or her dad, but then she's, but then um, I think it's her dad who, 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 who says, like, you know, like, no, your mom and I love each other. It's just hard sometimes. And then, and then just, like, how how um how we see that they really do love each other in that moment and it's just so sweet and cathartic Mm -hmm. and then obviously there's the catharsis of the rest of the movie with her and her mom 
which Mm -hmm. um even like the first shot of this movie when i saw it i'm like that that's like your theme in like a shot and it's absolutely perfect like greta like that's just like i aspire to be that detail oriented with my work where like the first scene the first shot is just your theme in a single image and i love and that. it was like when they were in the hotel room right mm-hmm. okay yeah yeah the first shot is the two of them lying on the bed um just sleeping and then there's like in the hotel and oh, their yeah. first conversation right. is like she's like why are you cleaning up the hotel room mom and she's like well it's nice to clean <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah yeah i was thinking about that that first dialogue earlier um and how it kind of sets up the rest of it especially in the car when they're they're like bonding they're listening to the book on tape they're crying together and then immediately it just switches and they get into an argument and Mm -hmm. just so hot and cold okay so do you want to talk about what else we watched this week sure what else did you watch this week i've watched a lot this week oh i talked about pieces of a woman last week right i don't remember if you did i'm sorry i don't remember if i did either yeah, actually, I don't think I did because I had just finished the trial of the Chicago 7 that day. Yeah, because that one and you talked, talked about. about that one. You did yes. talk about trial okay. of Chicago 7. Okay, so after I watched that, I was on my, my Oscars kick, and I was like, okay, what else can I watch that's on Netflix that has some Oscar nominations? And this one came up, uh, Pieces of a Woman. Um, Vanessa Kirby is nominated for Best Actress, which I agree with she did awesome in this movie but this was probably like the hardest movie i've ever watched (laughs) really it was so intense it was the one i told did i tell you about this one i mean i sent you a snap saying like don't watch this movie (laughs) it's so horrible oh yeah you did and then i was like are you okay like i was not okay (laughs) it was so crazy and it was very very depressing but the ending was good and the acting was really really good uh shia labeouf is in it too um but it was just oh man so many emotions that whole thing i think well for the first 15 minutes like even before they show the title i was just sitting there with like my hands on my face like i was like not watching some parts and i was like oh my god what the what is happening and it was just it was just a lot um and it was sad and everything so um if you can handle nope um (laughs) yeah i told everyone i was like guys beware if you watch this movie i told my mom i was like mom don't watch this movie and she's like oh yeah i've seen that and i'm like what (laughs) and she's like i don't really remember it i was like really this is a movie i will remember for the rest of my life it was so like heart-wrenching so after that i was like okay what can i watch that will make me feel better and i watched the documentary my octopus teacher What's that about? Oh my god, it's a beautiful the literal, story. The literal definition? It's about a man who um, scuba dives, or not scuba dives, he actually just snorkels and like holds his breath. He was kind of going through like a midlife crisis and was like, what can I do every day? And he's, he had a, a house in the Cape of South Africa. So he would go scuba diving around there not scuba diving god damn it uh snorkeling snorkeling (laughs) and (laughs) one day i mean he was like oh he's always been fascinated with marine life and everything and one day he saw an octopus and was just fascinated by it and it took over all of his free time and he visited the octopus every day for like a year and they became like best friends and he pretty much fell in love with her and Mm -hmm. The way he talks about her was just like so magical and i i cried at this movie too so it didn't really make me feel better but it was just like, it was a different type of cry <laughs> and it was oh my god some of the shots are just incredible it was so good i wow. recommend it so much it's five stars for sure it was wow. oh my god it was so so mm-hmm. so good that's beautiful um and then I started to watch another Oscar-nominated movie. It was uh, Glenn Close was nominated for Best Supporting Actress for Hillbilly Elegy. Okay. Um, that's on Netflix, too. Um, I didn't finish it, though, because I got halfway through, and I was like, eh, I don't really care how this ends, and I don't really like watching it, so <laughs> there we go. Um <laughs> 
Then I was talking to some of my coworkers, and they recommended the movie Pi, just P-I, like the math symbol. Mm -hmm. And it was very weird, like almost Lynchian. But I didn't connect to it as much as I wanted to, or as much as I thought I would. It was Uh in black and white, um, made in 98, and it was about this guy who's like trying to find the secrets of the universe using math and numbers, and he finds like this code that repeats itself over and over and over, kind of like the Pythagorean theorem in nature. No, Fibonacci sequence. Sorry, the Fibonacci sequence in nature. Um, okay. But yeah, I didn't I didn't watch the ending. I was really tired and I went and got ready for bed instead. <laughs> but I think if I would have known more about what the director was trying to do with it or maybe more of his backstory, I would have appreciated it more or seen more by the director or something you know how kind of like if you just watch one off erase her head you're like what the hell is this but if you know everything about david lynch you're kind of more into it you know so yeah yeah now i feel like i need to do that with every director to appreciate them more (laughs) that's actually a really great way to look at it yeah yeah because they're obviously trying to say something i just don't know what Uh it is (laughs) (laughs) so um not not to get on a tangent but what do you think david lynch is saying with lost highway oh god have have communication for sure for sure with your loved ones um talk about your insecurities oh yeah absolutely insecurities if creepy men come up to you call the cops <laughs> yeah just some general life advice first of all i love the the song in that scene but the song is called something wicked this way comes mm. when the mystery man approaches fred mm. and i'm like that's that's so poetic i know not to not 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 to get off topic but um no, it takes me a that. second to like jump back into Lost Highway because it's just so expansive. It's like, okay, well, I gotta, I gotta be in the right mindset, and I gotta think about how it starts, how it ends, what's in the middle, and like all the characters and everything. So, yeah. Yes, I still would love to make uh, some kind of, uh, if we could find a digital copy, I'd love to make some kind of edit where I'm like, this is how I think it happens chronologically, or at least like get one of those big like boards and like thumbtacks with post-its with like, all the lines connected <laughs> i'll make one of those but for lost highway okay um did you watch anything else this week okay yeah the last thing i watched was the invisible man on hbo came out last year uh, i had been wanting to see it oh, since yeah. i saw the trailers yeah with elizabeth moss she was of course really good and there was a lot of shots of her face which is good because she does she just has so much emotion <laughs> It was entertaining for sure. It was pretty creepy, scary, had some good jump scares. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's kind of hard to say my opinion without spoiling it, but uh, I would recommend watching it. It's pretty entertaining. It's part of the dark universe. Oh, is it? Ex- 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 except it's not because it doesn't exist anymore. What is Sorry, the dark it's, it's a really universe. stupid joke. Okay, so be- be- this... This this won't be a huge tangent, okay. so but it'll be a little bit of a tangent. So, um, so in 2014 there was there were there were there was a movie called, uh, okay, obviously the universe they wanted to make a universe because Marvel did it successfully, DC did the same thing, you know, and that kind of panned out. Not really, they're repairing themselves. But anyway, <laughs> so in 2014, a movie comes out called Dracula Untold. And Universal's like, we're going to reboot all the 1940s classics, Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, The Mummy, and we're going to make it a, un- a shared universe. Mm. So 2014 was Dracula Untold. Then it came out and didn't do well. So then they're like, okay, this isn't the first one. We're going to make it a standalone story. Mm. 2017 comes out. They make The Mummy with Tom Cruise. And then it, it, when the movie starts, it has the Dark Universe like logo before the movie. The movie does terrible. Nobody <laughs> nobody liked it critically. Or yeah. fi- no no fans hated it. It was a piece of crap. And, and then they're like, then then they had the, it was all these setups for more movies. And then they're like, oh that didn't do well. So now we're just gonna make a bunch of random movies that aren't connected. So like <laughs> and all Invisible suck. Man. That yes, yeah, so Invisible Man is not because Dark Universe doesn't exist anymore. But in as, as a joke, it does. So ah, it's just, it's okay. Just, it's just a stupid joke. I got you. Okay, and what is it? One studio that that was doing it? Yeah, Universal, because they were because they because ha- they had like in the nineteen forties they made Dracula, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, The Mummy, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Dracula, um, Invisible Man, Wolf Man, all those, and then they're like, oh yeah, let's do that in modern movies, but we'll connect them all. So like Jekyll and Hyde will Doctor 
Dr. Jekyll will be in The Mummy and the Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein will be in The Invisible Man. And, I would totally you know, love that. I would too, but then they fucked it up twice and they're like, well, we're not going to do it anymore. That sucks. <laughs> Apparently the mummy, the Tom Cruise mummy, was just that bad. Yeah, I didn't see it. I didn't either. Of course, I've never seen the other mummy movies either, so. I want. I kind of want to watch the Brendan Fraser ones, um, mm-hmm. but I haven't seen them. But I've heard they're fun, so. Yeah. I found a. I turned on the TV. Um, one. I didn't watch this movie, but I saw like I saw like one scene, and I'm like, this is amazing. I want to watch it. So I told my sister about it, and she laughed so hard at the, at the idea. <laughs> so I turned on the TV like yesterday morning or the morning before, and there and it's on the Lifetime channel, and it's a Lifetime movie. So and then the movie was called. It was called okay. Wait, I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you the title. I'm gonna tell you the plot. Okay. So the plot is there's this woman and she hires this guy to be her pool boy, and and and, and then and, and then and then he tries to go out with her, and then and then she's like no, and so, so, so then so then he tries going after her daughter, and it turns out he's it turns out he's a super manipulative like 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 the invisible man type character and then and then 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 the mom's like hey daughter you can't date this guy he's a creep and then she's like you're just jealous because because you rejected him and it's called (laughs) pool boy nightmare (laughs) doesn't that sound like the best movie ever made oh my god and the acting was the acting was so bad <laughs> and, and, and like the one minute I saw was the scene between the mom and the daughter fighting over this guy, and the acting was so bad. I was like, "Oh, oh my god, god. I, ha- I want to watch this just because it looks awful." That's hilarious. My parents have a pool boy, but uh, he's he's pretty okay. He's not a nightmare. The only nightmare thing that would happen would be like he mix, mixes up the chemicals in our pool, and then and then somebody dies. Then we turn into acid, an acid or, or bath. Th- or it's like Big Fat Liar and you just turn blue. Yeah. <laughs> like Paul Giamatti. Yes. Yeah. So, other things you watched? I didn't watch that, to be clear. I didn't watch it. <laughs> okay, I turned it off okay, for two okay. minutes and I'm like, and I'm like <laughs> this, this, this looks awful. So, 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 I did a little bit of a, I started my Batman watch of the Batman, because I, I was sleeping on the animated Batman movies. That's right. First, I watched Batman Year One. Which I thought was okay. I was a bit disappointed by it. Um, it was direct to video, so the animation style wasn't quite there. Um, it focuses on Jim Gordon, which I liked, but mm. I wish it had been called Jim Gordon Year One, even though it wouldn't have sold. Because I had a comic. I think it was called Superman Year One, and it was like this alternate, like version of like obviously the first year of Superman being Superman. And I thought that's what Batman would be, because I don't have any comic familiarity with the comics. Um, mm-hmm. But it was still it was still a good story. It just wasn't anything great. Okay. And then I had and then I watched uh, Batman Beyond the movie, which is which is um, it's the beginning of the series. So it's like it's like older Bruce Wayne, and then there's a younger um, his name is like Terry Terry something Terry McGinnis, I think. And then it's like older Bruce Wayne training this new hotshot kid to be Batman, and he's got this cool suit and it's cyberpunk and it's it's pretty mm, cool. Cool. There's the Batman Beyond like movie which is the beginning and then there's return of the joker which i don't know when it takes place but i was glad i watched it after because i had context of batman beyond Mm -hmm. um but return of the joker is one of the most disturbing movies i've ever seen in my life really like i was unsettled by it it's horrifying so and and it's it's animated keep in mind it's not like so which i I know doesn't this isn't a detractor but that that makes it even creepier because the facial expressions can be more pronounced if you're if you're curious, I'll tell you why it's disturbing, even though it's a bit of a spoiler. Yeah, let me know. So, the main plot of the movie is Terry, the new Batman, fights this guy who who says he's the Joker, like brought back from the dead, even though he kind of is, kind of isn't. It doesn't matter. That's like the main part of the story. Okay. But then we find out in a flashback how the Joker really died. So, the Joker and Harley Quinn they kidnapped. So so this in this version there's like. Robin and then Robin turns into Nightwing and then Batman takes on a new Robin who's like 10, 10 years old, right? Okay. So it's like Batman and his 10 year old kid. So this 10 year old Robin gets kidnapped by the Joker and Harley Quinn, goes missing for three weeks, and then Batman and Batgirl go down to find um, go down to find this new Robin. And then, then they bring, Joker brings him out and then he's been like 
giving him shock therapy for three weeks so now he knows that batman is bruce wayne and he's turned the kid into his own son and and he turned the kid insane so then this kid is now like dressed like the joker this like 10 year old kid and he's like laughing maniacally oh and then and then there's a big fight and then joker and batman are like grappling with each other and then the kid's like holding a gun up to batman and then, then joke joker's like go and go and kill batman and then he's just like laughing like crazy and then he manages to move his gun and kills the joker instead and then he just like starts crying and just collapses and i'm cool. like and it's a 10 year old kid and i'm like jesus christ like wow it's it's so disturbing and it go, and it's like 20 minutes of the movie it's so oh my gosh it's so messed up that's intense um, it's intense when when it was over i'm like Ooh, I got I I couldn't even focus on the ending of the movie because I was still <laughs> focused on what happened in the middle. Yeah, wow. Um, it's really messed up. And then like you see that young Robin kid older, and he's like more back to sanity. But he's but they're he, they're still suspecting like is he involved with this new Joker coming back? And he is, but not of his own volition. And it's so it's so twisted. Wow. But yeah, so one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen. Um, okay. Grave of the Fireflies is more disturbing, but just by a little bit. Dang. All right. Um, yeah. So I wanted to watch more, but I just haven't had the time yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so it's a really good movie. Um, it's in what it's in my top. I'm re- I'm doing a new Batman ranked list because now I'm seeing more movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's in like my top. Uh, it's in my top five as of now. So we'll see how it how it continues to go. But yeah. how many more Batman movies are there to watch? There's a lot. I think I have like ten more to watch, but a lot of them are really short. Like they're like they're like seventy five minutes or or shorter. So. Okay. But there's a there's a few that I've heard are really good that I want to watch, so I'm gonna give those a watch. So. What's your number one Batman right now? Batman Forever. Uh no, I love Batman Forever, but that's not my. Uh, Mask of the Phantasm is my number one. Um, okay. Which is the first animated Batman movie, and it's so, it's so good. It's, it's amazing. I have not seen it. Although, um, it's 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 on HBO if you want to watch it. Honestly, and don't get me wrong, I re- I love the the you know the four Batman movies where I'm like, oh, you should watch those. But Mask of the Phantasm is like, as a Batman movie, as a Batman story, it's the best. Okay. As my personal favorite, I don't know if it's quite there. It might be debatable. But as like, you want the best Batman movie ever made? I'd say go with Mask of the Phantasm. Okay, good to know. And it's short too. It's like seventy-five minutes. So, not in like Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, which is two hours and forty-five minutes. God. Um, although I really like Dark Knight Rises. Although I don't remember it, so I don't know where it would go on the ranked list. So I'd have to watch it again. But I'm not gonna, cause it's long as shit. Yeah. So that's what I watched. Um, I was hoping I'd have a list of like seven animated Batman movies, but that just didn't happen. Next time, maybe. Next time, maybe. Yeah, and maybe some young adult movies in there too. Oh, yeah. I'm excited to hear your journey on that. So, yeah, you'll have to let me know. I shall. Um, Yes. What are we going to watch next? Well, I was going to say we should do Agent Cody Banks. Yes. (laughs) Yes, please. Um, Double feature, right? Double feature, Agent Cody Banks 1, Agent Cody Banks 2. Because we got to watch the second (laughs) one. Because the second one is, like, iconic. (laughs) I know. Like, the first so one's quotable. good, but then two is iconic. So quotable. Like, it's, yeah, it has a huge part in my childhood. <laughs> Me too. Me too. <laughs> I wonder if they're on anything. I'll, I'll check that for you right now. Hang on. Destination London. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Woodwind Buddy. Woodwind Buddy. <laughs> 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 oh my god it's so it's so great it's so great <laughs> yeah okay so let's see hulu premium sling tv premium oh they're on showtime the first one is okay so the first the first one's on showtime and the second one's on amazon prime all right so next week we'll be back with our woodwind buddy favorite chocolate surprise chocolate surprise <laughs> we're gonna be eating chocolate surprise Oh my god, we should. We should while we're watching the movie. We should. Yeah, we let's totally make our should. Own chocolate surprises, and then we'll share our recipes with each other. Too. Yeah, and then and we'll, and we'll talk take about pictures it. of our finished product and put it on Instagram on the post. There we go. Oh man, I love it. I, I love, love it. it. <laughs> yeah, follow us on Instagram at Film Therapy Podcast. 
You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Film Therapy Podcast, mm-hmm. and rate and review us on your favorite listening platform, please. We still haven't gotten many reviews. We would, uh, we would appreciate it if you could do that. We would love it if you review a couple, us. A couple seconds, please. Yeah, I mean, um, be, be, be honest, be factual, but don't be mean with your yeah, reviews. Yeah, yeah, don't be mean. I mean, if I mean, if, if there's things we can do better, by all means, let us know. You know. Mhm. Mhm. But anyway, thank you for listening. So until next time, keep your eyes Waiter. on the prize. Wait, what? <laughs> what?